What is going on guys? If you guys haven't already been following along, I'm currently taking a GM 14 bolt rear axle and a Ford F350 front axle and throwing it in to my Jeep Wrangler. So the axle that I'm working with is going to be a full float 14 bolt axle and we are going to change it into a 13 bolt rear differential cover, thus the uh, point of the whole video here. So what is the actual point of doing this? Well, looking on down here, we have this big gigantic rear differential and there's this big old notch at the bottom that hangs down and it hangs down almost uh, <laughs> two inches. That's a lot. It is actually notched coming down. So it is the perfect place to catch everything like rocks, boulders. Uh, that's the same thing. Stumps, sticks, dirt mounds, whatever. You'll be dragging this thing on a lot of stuff and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to do the non welding shave of the bottom differential. So cutting it off, we're going to gain uh, about an inch and a quarter. That doesn't seem like a lot, but that is uh, say you're lifting your whole Jeep up three inches. That's a third of the entire lift underneath the differential that's still hanging down. So an inch and a quarter is still uh, quite a bit. Plus, you're going to have that front end that's not uh, notched that's coming down. It's not something that's going to hang up. It's going to be nice and smooth. So if your differential does hit on something, it'll slide right on off. So there is the other option that you can do is uh, taking a 14 bolt, shaving the entire bottom, cutting it off, grinding down your ring gear just a little bit and welding a plate on there. That'll give you an extra about half an inch or so, which is not something I want to do. I don't want to grind down the ring gear uh, to gain that little extra half an inch. The diff cover that I'm going with is the Moto Built. Oh, heavy duty. Uh, heavy duty is right. This thing is heavy. Uh, I'm going to be using this specifically. So what I'll do is I'll link that in the description below for you guys. So you know which one I'm using. And uh, that was loud. First thing you want to do is make sure your differential is completely drained of fluid. You don't want to be opening up that case and have it pour all over your garage. Gear oil is the worst thing to get on you because it will not come off. You should ask me how I know. So we're going to be taking off this rear differential cover here. I have not gotten any of my gears or lockers yet, so uh, the stock gearing is still in here. You do not want to do this shave if you're going to be using this gearing or if you've done it after you've installed your new gears and lockers. So make sure it is either empty or it is your old gear set in here. This diff, diff cover is a lot larger in diameter but it is super duper thin compared to the new one. Um, bash it up against rocks, this thing will not hold up, whereas the new one definitely will. And as you can see, I have my old gear set in here, so uh, I'm not too worried about that. This is gonna go to the junkyard and just get rid of it. Unless somebody wants some 410 gears for a 14 bolt rear end, let me know in the comments below. If I still have it, I'll give it to you. If you're local, I'm not gonna ship this thing. That's, it's heavy. So before you do any cutting on there, what you want to do is you want to go down and get to that drain plug that's on the bottom. It is going to be a 3 8 drive drain plug. So we will be cutting all the way through that drain plug. So you want to make sure that thing is tight because once you cut through this 3 8 bit, it's not going to be able to fit in there and you'll never be able to tighten it up. So tighten it as tight as you can, which does mean that if you ever want to do a differential fluid change, say after you're done with the gearing at the 500 mile mark, you are going to have to pull the full diff cover and dump it out that way but that's just something to heads up. You don't have a drain plug anymore. Okay, so mine was already tightened up in there. I don't know if it seized up, but even better if it was. Just make sure you're cutting through straight. Don't cut in an angle, so you cut up into the bottom of the differential and make sure you cut it nice and smooth so we can smooth that out later. Okay, so now that we have the new differential sitting on here, it is time to actually mark where we wanna cut. Now there are two uh, indent scoops on mine. I'm gonna actually cut those as well. So it kind of rounds it all out. Once you have everything marked down on here, it is time to pull this valve cover back off of here and it is time to start cutting. So we're gonna cut through all this with uh, a combination of an angle grinder. If you have a bandsaw, a bandsaw is the best thing to do, but I do not have one. Ryobi, if you're listening to this, send me a bandsaw. <laughs> I have everything else but a bandsaw in my garage. It is going to be cast steel, so it will take some time. Uh, if you've cast through cast steel with the rest of your axles, you already know this. Take your time, go slow, go smoothly. Boom, there we go. This may not look like a lot. When it comes to wheeling, 
that a little extra inch makes a whole lot of difference especially this bottom lip here you can see kind of see that on the camera uh, that is something that will catch that will hang up and that just that little bit is going to hang you up from a uh, continue on the trail okay so now you can see down here everything is all nice and smooth everything's all rounded out so that's going to catch on anything it is time to test fit the differential cover just go ahead and set it on there make sure everything lines up just right okay there we go and if i do say so myself that came out perfect everything's nice and flush down here Everything sits perfect. I, I'm happy about that. I smoothed everything out down here underneath, uh, smoothed some of the fins down, smoothed down the edges here. So now not much is going to catch up on the bottom of this. Pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Yeah, the diff cover itself needs to be painted all uh, nice and beautiful. All right, guys, and there we have it. It is so much better there's so much we cut off there uh, about an inch and a quarter off there and everything is all nice and smooth the whole way now everything's all painted up i gotta wait for uh, it to dry tomorrow morning and then uh, it is time to start doing the gearing which is going to be the next video so if you guys haven't already hit that subscribe button for me and i'm going to see you guys all next time